Hi, my name is Supiya Stabe. I'm a peer educator at YP Nepal. And today, I'm here to discuss about menstrual hygiene management. Did you know that every year on the 28th of May, World Menstrual Hygiene Day is celebrated globally? Menstrual Hygiene Day, also known as MH Day, is a global advocacy platform that brings together the voices and actions of non-profit, government agencies, individual, the private sector, and the media to promote good menstrual hygiene management for all women and girls. More specifically, MH Day breaks the silence raises awareness and changes negative social norms around emission and engages decision makers to increase the political priority and catalyze action for emission at global, national and local levels. The theme for the World Menstrual Hygiene Day 2019 was Time for action. This not only emphasizes the urgency of this public health issue, but also highlights the transformative power of improved menstrual hygiene to empower the world's women and girls and unlock their economic and educational opportunities. After all, what's more cuterous? than your uterus. But before diving into MHM, you should know about menstruation. So what is it? Medically, menstruation, also termed as period or bleeding, is the process in a woman of discharging to the vagina, blood and other materials from the lining of the uterus at about one monthly interval from puberty until menopause, that is keezing or complete ending of regular menstrual cycle, except during pregnancy. To learn about menstruation, you must have a clear understanding about the female reproductive system. The uterus or womb is a hollow organ located centrally in the pelvis. It houses the developing fetus during pregnancy. Cervix is the lower portion of the uterus that opens into the vagina or birth canal. An opening in the cervix allows for the passage of sperms into the uterus and the exit of menstrual blood. This same opening dilates during labor to allow passage of the baby through the birth canal. Fallopian tubes are channels that allow eggs from the ovaries to enter the uterus. The process of fertilization of an egg by a sperm cell typically happens here, and the fertilized egg moves into the uterus where it is implanted. Ovaries produce hormones and contain eggs. At birth, a female has 1 to 2 million eggs already present in the ovaries, but only about 300 of them will mature during a woman's lifetime. Normally, one egg is produced during a single menstrual cycle. Vagina is a canal that joins the cervix, that is, the lower part of uterus, to the outside of the body. It is also known as the birth canal. Endometrium is a superficial lining of the uterus. It changes according to the menstrual cycle. It also receives and prepares for the fertilized ovum and then helps form the placenta. Let us now learn briefly about the menstruation cycle. Each month during the years between puberty 
and menopause. A woman's body goes through a number of changes to get it ready for a possible pregnancy. This series of hormone-driven events is called the menstrual cycle. During each menstrual cycle, an egg develops and is released from the ovaries. The lining of the uterus builds up. If a pregnancy doesn't happen, the uterine lining sheds during a menstrual period. Then, the cycle starts again. A women's menstrual cycle is divided into four phases. Menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulation phase, and luteal phase. The length of each phase can differ from woman to woman and it can change over time. The cycle can range anywhere from 21 to 35 days in adults and from 21 to 45 days in young teens. You can see the 28 days menstrual cycle in the given diagram. The menstrual phase is the first stage of the menstrual cycle also when you get your period. This phase starts when an egg from the previous cycle is not fertilized. Because pregnancy has not taken place, levels of hormones estrogen and progesterone drop. The thickened lining of the uterus, which would support a pregnancy, is no longer needed, so it sheds through your vagina. During your period, you release a combination of blood, mucus, and tissue from your uterus. You may have period symptoms like these, cramps, tender breasts, bloating, mood swings, irritability, headaches, tiredness, and low back pain. On average, women are in the menstrual phase of their cycle for three to seven days. Some women have longer periods than others. The follicular phase starts on the first day of your period. So there is some overlap with the menstrual phase and ends when you ovulate. It starts when the hypothalamus sends a signal to your pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone. This hormone stimulates your ovaries to produce around 5 to 20 small sacs called follicles. This follicle contains an immature egg. Only the healthiest egg will eventually mature. On rare occasions, women may have two eggs mature. The rest of the follicles will be reabsorbed into your body. The maturing follicle sets up a surge in estrogen that thickens the lining of your uterus. This creates a nutrient-rich environment for an embryo to grow. The average follicular phase lasts for about 16 days. It can range from 11 to 27 days depending on your cycle. Rising estrogen levels during the follicular phase triggers your pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone. This is what starts the process of ovulation. Ovulation is when your ovary releases a mature egg. The egg travels down the fallopian tube towards the uterus to be fertilized by sperm. Ovulation is characterized by a slight rise in basal body temperature and thicker discharge that has the texture of egg whites. Ovulation happens at around day 14 if you have a 28 day cycle, right in the middle of your menstrual cycle. It lasts about 24 hours. After a day, the egg will die dissolve if it is not fertilized. Luteal phase. After the follicle releases its egg, it changes into the corpus luteum. This structure releases hormones, mainly progesterone and some estrogen. The rise in hormones 
keep your uterine lining taped and ready for a fertilized egg to implant. If you do get pregnant, your body will produce human chorionic gonadotropin. This is the hormone that pregnancy tests detect. It helps maintain the corpus luteum and keeps the uterine lining thick. But if you do not get pregnant, the corpus luteum will shrink away and be reabsorbed. This leads to the decreased level of estrogen and progesterone, which causes the onset of your period. The uterine lining will shed during your period. During this phase, if you do not get pregnant, you may experience symptoms of premenstrual syndrome, also known as PMS. These include bloating, breast swelling, pain or tenderness, mood changes, headache, weight gain, changes in sexual desire, food craving, trouble sleeping. The luteal phase lasts for 11 to 17 days. The average length is 14 days. Now that you've learned about menstruation, let's learn about menstrual hygiene management. The definition of MHM is given above and states, women and adolescent girls are using clean menstrual management materials to absorb or collect blood that can be changed in privacy as often as necessary for the duration of the menstrual period using soap and water for washing the body as required and having the access to facilities to dispose of used menstrual management materials. So, how can you maintain a good menstrual hygiene including cramps which feel like bees? Number 1. Manage the flow using these devices. Change tampons and pads at least every 4 to 8 hours. Maintain general hygiene. Use clean clothes and clean them regularly. Keep the genital area clean and dry. Do not use soap. Keep groin area that is between the legs clean and dry. Vagina has its own self-cleansing mechanism. Have an active lifestyle. Do light exercises like walking, stretching. This can reduce the discomfort and pain. Number 4. Have a balanced diet. Eat nutritious food. Iron-rich foods like spinach, green leafy vegetables, fruits are essential. Also, don't forget to stay hydrated. Now that you're all prepared, enjoy your journey to the menstrual island. Also, tell us about the social and cultural taboos related to menstruation and the role of youths in promoting menstrual hygiene in the comment down below. Let's break the vicious cycle of menstrual taboo. Break the silence. Let's talk about menstruation and raise a generation free from menstrual taboos. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.